Hello all, welcome to the VoIP Traffic Analysis course on Pentester Academy. Now in this course, uh, in this video, we will look at SIP over TLS and SRTP and see how under certain conditions we can end up decrypting the traffic and recovering the voice call. So this is the fourth possibility of SIP RTP combinations. And clearly this is the most secure one, right? Because you have SIP encrypted going through a TLS tunnel and that SIP contains SDP inside it, which has the encryption keys for SRTP. And this is really where, you know, just by looking at the traffic, an attacker has no way or a pen tester has no way of recovering uh, the keys within SDP and hence you cannot decrypt SRTP. So what options are available? Now this is really where depending on you know where you're coming from, if you're looking at this from a red teaming or a pen testing perspective, well, the only real option is to see if you can MITM the traffic between the client and the server and see if you can go ahead and uh, look at whatever is being sent. Now we will have a separate course on MITM uh, as this is just a traffic analysis course, I'm just mentioning it, but we won't be covering it here. The other options actually include if uh, you are probably doing some kind of an investigation internally in the company and you do have access to the admin team who are ready to cooperate. Now, this is really where in TLS encryption, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that the algorithm set on the server is a non-DHE or a non-Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. In such case, it is possible to use the server's private key and go ahead and decrypt all communication network-wide happening with the VoIP server. And this is a demo we are going to do in this video and the next couple uh, videos. Now, if this is a DHE-based encryption algorithm, which is DHE is used for key exchange initially, then unfortunately, you are going to be out of luck because the only way would be to go ahead and get the keys either from the VoIP endpoint or from the server dynamically as they are being created. Now, it is possible to either modify the server code or do injection attacks using LD preload and whatnot so that as the keys are generated using whatever TLS uh, APIs are being used like OpenSSL, then at that point, you can dump the keys out. Now, I'm going to be creating a Wireshark basics course in which I'll show you how we can use uh, these dynamic keys along with Firefox and Chrome to decrypt traffic live. However, in the case of VoIP, uh, the only real thing left is to do something on the server with an injection attack, right? So this is of course the most secure one and rightfully so. I mean, if th even this wasn't secure by design or default, then we really cannot use VoIP anymore, right? We have to search for a new security on that. So what I'm going to do is show you a demo for the non-DHE case where the server's private key is available. And then once that info is there, how you can decrypt and then recover everything else. So let's jump right in. Now in the sample calls directly, let go over SIP over TLS. And then RSA RT, SRTP. Now if you notice, we have a default.key file in here. This is actually the private key file from the server. And you can use the OpenSSL tool to you know, get information out of this. Now, I don't want to make this a TLS, uh, you know, SSL class. So I'll try to keep uh, that part to a bare minimum only as much as we require. So here is the default key or rather the private key. Uh, I'm going to open up call to voicemail in Wireshark. And now if I apply a filter for either SIP or RTP, you'll notice just, just like the case where we had SIP over TLS and RTP, we are out of luck. Now, if we looked at the overall statistics, let's say protocol hierarchy, what you would find is there is traffic 
uh, which is actually using secure sockets layer and if we look at that SSL traffic and we look at application data you would actually find that SIP is actually being carried within that tunnel uh, using TCP. Fantastic. Okay. So now how do we go about analyzing that even if we have the key, whether we can decrypt this or not, where it's simple. Uh, let's look at SSL at a very high level and how it works. So we see a client hello message on the top and this is the message the client sends to the TLS enabled server. And we can see this is a client hello message. Now if you look at Cypher Suites, you'll actually see a huge list of Cypher Suites. Uh, so for example, the one on the top is TLS, ECDHE, Elliptic Curve, Defi Hellman Exchange. Uh, that's actually going to be the key exchange algorithm, followed by with AES, 256, GCM, blah, 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 you know, many, many options. Now ideally how this works is the client is going to give this list and the list is typically based on from high security to low security and based on this list the server decides what algorithm it like to choose. So if we look at the server hello message in response to the client hello you'll actually see in this case the server has chosen a non-DHE uh, RSA with AES option. And this is the one we can go ahead and decrypt if we had the private key. Now, if the server had chosen any of the DHE or elliptic curve DHE ones, uh, then unfortunately, even if you have the private key, it's of no use. You will have to go ahead and figure out what the runtime session keys are either at the endpoint or at the server, right? So anyway, uh, this is the option we are seeing right now, which means we can actually use the server's private key to decrypt this SSL communication. So how would we do that? Click on edit, click on preferences. We'll expand protocols and then go all the way down to SSL. Probably gonna have a sip of coffee. SSL and coffee go well together. Okay, where does this sell? There you go. Now in here, you notice there is an option for RSA keys at list. Click on that. So this is where we are actually going to put in uh, the default key file location. Now if you notice, we have IP address, port number, protocol, key file, and password. Now, the way this actually works is that we need to make sure that this is applied only to certain traffic or else what may end up happening is that Wireshark will try using this key file with all SSL traffic and that can be pretty painful. So what you would notice is the port numbers being used here is something we need. My bad, I should have shown you that first. So for this exchange, we see that the source port number for the server is 5061, right? Uh, so I'm going to go back there, edit preferences, protocol, click on that, RSA keys list. Now in the IP address, you could be specific or you can actually give all IP addresses. You know, I leave it as an exercise to you to be specific. Port number can be 5061 as we are clearly seeing that's the port number used. Again, you could leave it blank, but then Wireshark would end up trying it for all SSL traffic. The protocol, what are you expecting inside? SIP is what we are expecting. And then finally, the key file, which is the default key file inside the same directory. So click open and click OK. And the moment I click OK here, what you would notice is all of this TLS traffic, the application data traffic has now gotten decrypted and you can see we still see the TLS layer and the traffic inside is now completely available to us. So as you notice, we can see that this is SIP. Now the best part is once Wireshark succeeds in doing this, 
you can immediately start using all of the plugins we are so used to. So you could click on SIP flows and now all the flows are visible. So you can click on that, click on flow sequence and there you go, beautifully we can end up seeing everything. So now if we wanted, we could recover uh, the encryption keys for SRTP from inside SIP SDP packets. So based on previous knowledge, this packet should actually contain the keys of the client sent to the server. So let's actually go ahead and expand this packet. Scroll down. And if you notice, all four keys have been advertised here as expected. And what you'd actually find is the update SDB packet would finally locate the key which is being sent uh, from the client to the server. And the 200 OK from the server to the client would end up containing the server's key. Right, fantastic. So now we are actually back to what we were doing in the previous uh, set of videos, which is when we had SIP and SRTP. So you would have to basically take this key, copy it out, and then use SRTP decrypt to decrypt uh, the SRTP traffic into a hex dump, and then either import that hex dump into Wireshark, decode it at RTP packets by applying the dummy UDP header, or use a combination of text to PCAP uh, and uh, you know the tool PCAP to wave, which we used in the previous video, right? Fantastic. So this is what I had in mind for this video. In the next one, we will look at how we can use T Shark and go ahead and play with SIP over TLS plus SRTP traffic. So that's all for this video. Thank you.